Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm the last presentation of the day. Yay, we made it through. <laughs> I'd like to start by reintroducing myself. My name is Pam Rye, and I'm one of the Master of Public Health candidates. Um, as you can tell from my title slide, I will be sharing my learning about the use of technology as a tool for HIV prevention in young men who have sex with men. It worked? Okay. Um, I thought I would start today by providing a bit of background about my learning journey during my practicum experience. I completed my practicum over the span of seven months part-time within the Fraser Health Authority. The first four months were spent at the Bloodborne Sexually Transmitted Infections Unit working with frontline public health nurses. These nurses have many responsibilities, a part of which was offering point of care rapid HIV testing and providing support to HIV individuals, um, positive individuals as part of the healthcare team. One of the challenges that they shared with me is um, that people often don't know where to access testing and don't know a lot about HIV or how much it has changed over the past 20 years. Um, one of the nurses shared her frustration, I like this quote, she said, I don't understand why Fraser Health doesn't provide information on HIV testing on Craigslist. That's where MSM are looking for anonymous sexual encounters. I thought her idea was pretty brilliant. So for the second part of my practicum, I was working with the project coordinators from the Stop HIV rollout in Fraser Health. They are tasked with coming up with innovative ways to seek and treat um, individuals that are positive for HIV. In one of my conversations with the coordinator, I shared what the nurse had said to me, and he said that this was a strategy they were looking into, but, um, and he agreed that it would target people that may not self-identify as at risk for HIV. He said, but they needed to learn more about the strategy. With all this information in mind, I thought it fit perfectly in with what UVic wanted, as well as I could give something back to the agency that had so graciously agreed to mentor me for the last seven months. So just in case, for, for those of you that may not be familiar, young men who have sex with men, or I say why, MSM, is a term in the literature that usually refers to men, um, MSM, under the age of 30. The reason I chose to focus on this subpopulation instead of the general population of MSM is because they have some of the highest rates of HIV. When looking at new HIV diagnoses between different generations, the numbers have increased significantly among MSM born between 1980 and 89. This is due in part to the fact that different generations of MSM had different experiences of the HIV epidemic, and it also reflects uh, population dynamics and sexual activity as younger men age into the disease and younger men or older men age out of the disease. And the reason I chose to focus on a technology-based intervention is because of what I'd learned during my practicum, but also because the literature shows that young MSM have been found to heavily utilize search engines, um, internet search engines, gay-friendly chat rooms, and pornography websites to gain information on sex behavior. Many sexual health sessions that were taught in school settings lacked relevant inf information for individuals that identified as non-heterosexual. This left this population with um, a knowledge gap about safe sex practices. So taking all this information into consideration, I developed the purpose of my literature review. And the goal was to review successful technology-based strategies targeted to MSM, including young young MSM, where the goal of the program or the intervention was to um, reduce HIV transmis transmission and increase the uptake of HIV testing. Um, by critically assessing what had worked well in the past and what some of the barriers were with online programming, Fraser Health could take that forward in possible um, development of programs for themselves. Um, on the, the reason I included general MSM in my lit review is because I didn't want to narrow the review so far that I was going to miss really key articles that would be applicable to all subpopulations within MSM. So as the slide states really clearly, I used a bunch of different uh, databases and along with other cert, um, search strategies that we'd learned throughout the program, I also consulted with Dr. Mark Gilbert from the BC Center for Disease Control. And for those of you that don't know, he is currently working um, on strategies to promote and evaluate an internet-based testing program for HIV and STIs in, in BC. So I thought his input would be pretty valuable. So what I left in and what I took out. Basically, I started, um, I would start, was left with 57 articles after I finished all my searching, and I screened through the articles through a two-phase process. In the first phase, the abstracts were reviewed to ensure relevancy, and if they were relevant, then I confirmed that they met my inclusion criteria. This helped me to narrow my review down to 36 articles. 
Um, so then I go into theme. So the first theme I'm going to explore is around the program design, delivery method, and intended outcomes. And the second was around the challenges in evaluating technology-based interventions. So these were my findings, and these were the different methods that were used to um, provide the online programming. So some of the programs used um, dating or hookup websites where um, they targeted the sexual and social networks of gay and bisexual men to create a space where safe sex and condom use was the norm. In the HOPE study, um, they utilized a peer-led approach where leaders shared two-way communication with individuals about fundamentals of HIV prevention on social media sites such as Facebook. Another approach was used uh, was offering HIV prevention information one-on-one -on -one in chat rooms. So I'm just, I'm not going to go through all the lists because I don't want to run out of time. <laughs> so as one might, ex oh. Okay, it was supposed to say this one. Um, as one might ex expect, the, co the goals of the programs were quite common, and those are listed here. In addition to these goals, some of the programs also aim to decrease the use of alcohol and drug use in the hopes that it would result in less risk taking during sexual encounters, as well as an overall decrease in the number of sexual partners. Let's go back to the other one. So, the challenges that were dis um, discovered in the literature was that. Um, conducting formal evaluations on the success of pilot programs related to retention rates. So Nora et al. conducted a meta-analysis of 12 computer-delivered internet-based HIV int prevention strategies and reported retention rates as low as 37%. To address these poor retention rates, the MINT study proposed recommendations, which I'm not going to go into, but if anyone's interested, for future programming. Another challenge to internet-based HIV prevention is that it aims to integrate two research cultures, public health and internet software development. Um, research approaches utilized by each of these disciplines can be vastly different, and public health research tends to focus heavily on evidence-based interventions that have proven successful in large studies with a preference towards randomized control trials. Um, by the time some of the interventions have been tested and are ready for market, the technology has changed enough that it requires retooling so that the intervention can be considered current and relevant. Uh, many of the articles suggested that more research needs to be conducted on methods and designs effective for evaluation of e-public health, which is what I'm kind of talking about broadly. So, oh, now I'm going past. <laughs> so the, this is a summary of the um, recommendations that I gave to Fraser Health um, that they could use when developing an internet-based um, HIV intervention strategy. These considerations were pulled from the literature review and can also be applied when implementing other online prevention programming. Um, the suggestions follow many of the principles we learned throughout the program. The program should involve the target population in the development, and if they do, they show higher rates of success. Programs that utilize a holistic health promotion lens are necessary, and ones that focus just on one specific component were not as successful. Um, the ability for the consumer to link with service providers is important. Many of the programs used a two-way communication ability, and um, that was key for individuals to access information anonymously and safely. Um, maximizing the potential of online setting is important. You, the program should be entertaining, captivating, and stimulating, and if possible, have interactive and customizable features. Those that had those components seem to be having more um, user satisfaction. Um, and of course, the support of key stakeholders, such as role models or um, community leaders, help to create buy-in from the target group. And finally, the use of statistics can be incorporated, but the developer should avoid the use of scare tactics. Fear-based prevention can sometimes lead people to become defensive and less receptive to the health promotion messaging. So I really like this quote. Um, you guys are more than capable of reading it. <laughs> And the reason I like it is because it speaks to the potential of e-public health. It can reach individuals in a confidential, convenient, and cost-effective manner, which can be appealing in times of fiscal constraint, right? It has the ability to reach rural and global populations. E-health can be developed to address a wide range of health issues at a primary, secondary, and tertiary level. So lessons learned. When I thought about lessons learned, I thought about my personal lessons learned, so I, I probably doesn't fit with a lot of what everybody else said. But basically for me, this, the biggest challenge was stepping back from um, almost uh, more experienced public health practitioner 
back into the role of a student and enjoying the piece about just learning and learning from where I was. Um, it turned into a uh, um, strength eventually because I learned a lot from just being present and listening, really listening to what was being asked of me. I learned how to work with people that had a common interest but different approaches to reaching the end goal. The applied learning, although painful at times, has really helped me to gain confidence in my newly acquired skills. And finally, as we have all um, learned, the public health process is not a linear one and either was our practicum. There are lots of twists and turns that keep it interesting and relevant. And of course, I, this is the most important slide to me. And I forgot um, Dr. Lynn Davis as my second reader. My apologies, but thank you to everyone, but specifically my husband, my children, my sister, and the rest of my amazing family. Thank you. OK, uh, questions uh, for Pat? I can ask one. Come on, people. Last one. Oh, there we go. Lynn's got one. I'll, um, I'll, it's sort of half a comment and half a question as I walk it over to Lynn. The notion of c online community, particularly as it relates to men who have sex with men, is a fascinating one because people are communicating around the globe and having sex online around the globe. So community now is very different than even the way we think about it traditionally when we think about community-based research, say. Right? Unit of identity, but that identity is now global. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I guess two comments. Um, one, Pam, is that when I first opened your paper and I read the title, I thought, how can a computer screen affect the transmission of HIV? And boy, did I learn a lot. Oh, but I'm also, you. I'll cheerfully admit, I'm a late adopter of technology. That's <laughs> the polite term. Um, the other comment. Um, that I have is that I, when I was in my 30s, lots of my friends died from what was then called this GRID, gay-related immune deficiency. And I'm just so filled with grief to learn that the incidence of HIV among young men who have sex with men is rising again. I just, yeah. And so thank you very much for your work on this. It's, it's really important to me personally. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, for those comments. I think it's the one downside of any prevention strategy. When we start doing it really, really well, it gets, the diseases get forgotten, and that's when we start to see things start to resurface because it's forgotten the turmoil and trauma that's caused by it. So thank you. <laughs>